For a long time, Ares was seen as the foremost tricky and insignificant god of the entire Olympus, since, on a few occasions, he caused awesome catastrophes that destabilized the kingdom of his father. Numerous divine beings complained to Zeus about the rough behavior of his child Oz and requested that he be rebuffed to fix him out, making him a more sensible and astute god like his sister, the goddess Athena. Oz and Athena shared the same blessing of being divine beings of war, in any case, they were kin rivals for Ares' loathsome behavior appeared to be the inverse of the goddess, it appeared the dull side of war, viciousness, passing, and the horrible and unfriendly side of war. Whereas the goddess Athena had the blessing of intelligence, and her personality was that of equity. The inverse of her brother Ars from an early age, the kin demonstrated incredible contention, so much so that it drove Athena to disrupt a few of her brother's clashes. When Zeus requested to populate the soil, and particularly when he endorsed the creation of man, his child, the god of war, opposed this idea, he did not just like the thought of having a second rate being compared to the gods, and even though Zeus told him that the modern creatures of the soil would serve the divine beings, Ars did not share the thought and challenged him for a long time. Ares had kept up genuine clashes with his father since they separated from not giving him back. He always chose his sister Athena over him, saying that the goddess was much better, hence, over a long time, these encounters and challenges were progressively perilous and serious as contention and hatred developed. Ares tended to Olympus, saying that his father's creation was a total outrage, and they ought to get it. It was, but no god considered him since his terrible notoriety ruined him. In this way from that mortified day full of feebleness and scorn. He pledged to do away with Olympus, with the divine beings, with his father, and with his adored creation. Ares started to embrace long ventures from city to city with his steadfast companions Phobos, the god of frightfulness, Deimos, the god of fear, and Aeneas, the goddess of pulverization. They were continuously on the lookout for threatening undertakings, where they plundered and crushed whole cities. As Ares was the promoter of incredible fights that looked to destroy the kingdom of his father. Zeus, seeing the shocking behavior of his child, indeed detested him since he was not a great component of Olympus and rejected his sibling, saying that his dangerous personality and struggle were tragically acquired from his mother. On a few occasions, the confrontations between Zeus and Ares were amazingly annihilating, but Athena was continuously at her father's back and intensely went up against her brother, assaulting him until he was truly injured. Be that as it may, Zeus and Athena seem never to wrap up with Ares, since despite everything, he was her blood. Ares made a difference in firming his thirst for vindication in his struggle against his father, so for a long time, he arranged awesome techniques that would lead to his triumph over Zeus and Olympus in conjunction with his steadfast warrior companions. He arranged a ridiculous fight on the ground, causing people to battle each other where three gigantic streams were painted ruddy by the pitiless slaughter due to the intercession of Ares. This truth incensed Zeus so much that he called all the gods of Olympus to arrange the pulverization of his child until the end of time. In this way, to induce freedom from the superfluous conflicts he caused, he had adulterated mankind with viciousness, frightfulness, and a desire for war and was driving his killing by looting cities and murdering great men so that all the divine beings of the pantheon were greatly irate and bolstered the passing of Ars, declaring war on him. Before long requested the divine beings to halt the fiendish devastation of Ars, and so the divine beings slid one by one to the soil in the look of the degenerate god. Who for a long time was breaking the divine laws, in this way, the fullness of Olympus was against Ars, who was continuously supported by Phobos, Deimos, and Virtuoso, who upheld him. Since they were divine beings, as unfriendly as he was, the war had started, and Ares decided to terrorize the soil until the conclusion of humankind, and he would do it over everybody, indeed over his father. Zeus, the god of war, mindful of the statement of war, chose to get ready himself and hold up for his rebellious adversaries, 
To reach him before long the divine beings arrived full of anger with their best weapons, and with the want to murder the frantic god, be that as it may, as awed his opponents, because he unleashed his great control, as never seen some time recently, so many divine beings were anxious to confront him. Ars had uncovered the covered up constraint that made him a magnificent and indestructible god, so he battled with all the divine beings of Olympus and crushed them, all instantly holding up for the turn of his father. Zeus looked up to the sky. Ars held up for the primary blow from Zeus, who remained on Olympus, observing the debate of the divine beings with pity. He observed as his companions were annihilated by the one he least anticipated, the so-called least skilled god. The weakest Ares, after you're devastated by my hands, will never set foot on Olympus once more, you may not be welcome anywhere on soil, and your destiny will be in Tartarus's home. I await you, father. Come display yourself for the fight, for this is often the conclusion of the divine beings, and the conclusion of Olympus said to God, blazing him a cop's grin. Zeus, confident in his incredible control, slipped from Olympus considering his triumph. Ars promptly put on his goggles and wished with all his being the passing of his father. Hence, when they met face to face, they looked at each other with disdain, mindful that the fight between them would be so destructive that it might crush everything. The god of war thrust toward Zeus, attempting to push his forceful sword at him, but the wise god safely avoided it by hitting him back several times. But Ars did not waver and proceeded with the battle. Both divine beings were illustrating their incredible control, but Ares was proving that his father had almost wronged him. In this way, telling him that he was indeed superior to Athena, his favorite girl, and that because of his scorn and need for a back, the results would be devastating for Zeus. Athena was his most adored and trusted girl, for not at all like ours, she looked for peace, so his son's hurtful words filled him with outrage. Had you not been my child? Numerous a long time prior, I would have bolted you in Tartarus, said Zeus, staring at Ares. In any case, Ars overlooked him and proceeded to hit him with all his quality, so Zeus hit an extraordinary cry from past the grave, and a gigantic lightning jolt lit up the sky and echoed throughout the universe, even though his adversary did not indeed blink. Ars was profoundly spared since no one might meddle in the fight, and at the end, his triumph would be a reality. He attacked Zeus with anger until, after a long encounter, he was overseen to wound him with his sword in a small act of carelessness by the god. Zeus had been harmed by his most thoughtless child, his child, who never thought he would do anything in his entire life, and so on the ground humiliated, the god asked for peace with a colossal snicker. When Ars mocked the awesome god of Olympus, the king of the divine beings, who for eras extorted and misused others for his advantage and hence celebrated himself, he turned to his father and said, do you need peace? As it were, the thing that is standing by you is death, and all that you have made will inevitably be devastated, despite the lamentable state in which Zeus was, he had not yet lost his position of authority, even though he was harmed. He attempted to urge himself up from the sky, but it got dull. His groans were so uproarious that they appeared like chilling thunder from Tartarus, and when he finally stood up, he raised his eyes and said the world merits peace after everything that has happened. Olympus is around to break down because of you. Let me know what you need to conclude this. I would give it to you. Ars was mindful that the battle may go on for hundreds of years until he sees his father wrap up, so he thought of a procedure to be able to fathom it and fulfill his revenge. As it were this fight will conclude if you fulfill my conditions, from nowadays you and no one else will be able to interfere with the issues of the people, nor will you ever once more take advantage of them, protect them, or mollify their clashes, from nowadays you and all the gods must keep absent from men, absent from the soil, absent from creation, as it were at that point will I take off you free on your throne, and so moreover Olympus Zeus was in loose hope, so he may do nothing, but acknowledge his son's conditions and with awesome lament he told him that, he concurred the lord of the divine beings rose to Olympus, 
and with extraordinary distress and grief he bade goodbye to the world closing the entryways that associated Olympus and soil until the end of time.